Good morning, everybody. Would you just look at this greenery? Oh, I'm a little out of breath. I've just been running after the dogs. So all the brambles and now the bracken is starting to come through. Very, very different scene to what it was back in January. Very lush. Go on then, Reginald. We've not seen you on camera yet. Go on then. Yeah, they're trying to frighten him off. So one of the reasons we come here early in the morning is to avoid other people. And unfortunately, Reggie, uh, it's, it's Sunday today, so there's quite a few here. Reggie's just been attacked by uh, like a little, well, it wasn't that little, it was like a big version of, you know, the Caesar dogs on the adverts. And uh, the poor little, little lad's just been, uh, been victimized. So we'll stick to early morning, shall we, Reg? And there's nobody around. Bless him. And he's not too happy about the situation, though, is he? I mean, we had him on the lead, and uh, this other group come past us with uh, their dog, Loose, and they were all on bicycles. And it came straight for Reg. Reggie wanted nothing to do with it. Uh, and it just chased him around in circles for a second and then started biting him. It bit his back end, like maybe twice. I gave him enough slack on the lead so he could kind of defend himself. And then it came back in to bite him for a third time. So I, I delivered a short, swift kick to the bottom of its chin, which is not something I'd really want to be doing to another dog. But it weren't biting him again. And uh, yeah, it still came back for him a couple of times, but the guy had to dismount and come and uh, drag his dog back. We just continued to walk away, didn't we, Reg? But, you know, if you see somebody coming towards you, did you see him skid in the water then? If you see somebody coming towards you with dogs and they put their dogs on a lead, it's not to protect you, you know. Maybe their dogs don't like other dogs. So you should put yours on a lead too, just so yours don't go and hassle them. Because now Reggie's already got a problem with other dogs, he's not too sure around him, now he's just being attacked. So it's gonna do even less for his confidence. Poor little fella. Some people are just arseholes though, unfortunately. I can't blame the dog. If that dog had been on a lead, it would never have happened. You wanna cross, don't you, Chance? Well, I'm not gonna film the crossing because it's really, really slippy. It's getting slippier every day with all this sun. Come on then, boys. Wow. Good morning, fellas. Welcome along to the vlog. Today is Sunday. I've dragged myself into work simply because, well, I was fed up. And I thought what I'd do today is make a little vlog about how we disassemble part of the brew kit, namely the boil kettle, in order to give it a clean. We usually do this after a batch of brews, so in between one brew to the next, we will uh, caustic the tank, rinse it and acid it, and then brew the next day. But after a batch of brews, say four brews in a row, brew Monday, brew Tuesday, brew Wednesday, brew Thursday, clean Friday, We'll disassemble the whole boil kettle and give it a really deep clean. So, I'm Harry, welcome along to the channel, and this is taking apart a boil kettle. So the first thing that we've got to do here is rinse. This has had caustic in it overnight. It's cleaned all the surfaces inside the tank, but we don't want to get that caustic on our hands. So we're gonna rinse the whole thing down, and we're gonna utilize we're going to utilize the same technique for cleaning uh, for rinsing. So I'm just going to take just some mains water, which just so happens to be looped around the tripod leg, funnily enough. And then on the back side of the plate chiller, we've got an inlet port. 
So we've got the rinse water coming in through the bottom of the plate chiller. We can redirect the water to rinse out the pump. We can redirect the water to rinse out the plate chiller. We can redirect the water to rinse out the pipe work at the bottom. Once all the pipe work's been rinsed out, we'll then redirect the water through this flexible hose, this brew hose, into the spray ball fitting at the top of the tank and then we'll use that to rinse out the inside of the tank itself. And when all the tank is rinsed, we'll start disconnecting all of these components, taking them down, and moving them away to the cleaning area where we'll give them all a good scrub in the sink. And then once they've all been scrubbed in the sink, we'll reassemble the whole thing back together again. I might even take the HLT apart today, just because I can. So now I'm happy that the tank is rinsed and I've also decided to empty the HLT as well. We'll pull it all out while we're at it. What I'm going to do now is just disconnect the water in feed. I'm just going to disconnect the water in feed for the condenser stack. And then I'm going to remove the water jets and they're all just held in on RJT fittings. And then the whole jet assembly comes away like this. So we'll just take this to one side now. We'll clean the jets so they don't look too bad actually and maybe polish the copper before we assemble it back together. And the next part we can remove are a couple of locator lugs on this uh, little suspension arm, if you like. Just, just holds most of this um, stack in position. So we'll just give this a bit of a tweak. There's one. We'll just leave that bottom one in for a moment. We'll remove the large tri clamp fitting from around the neck. We'll pop that in the sink. Then we can just remove this last bolt at the bottom. And away comes the bottom section of the condenser flue. And as you can see, it's rather clean inside still. It doesn't really get touched buy any product at all unless we have kind of a dramatic boil over but it's good practice to take your kit apart anyway if nothing else but to check wear and tear so here we have a tri-clamp gasket which has seen better days fortunately this is just holding steam into the flue not actually product or anything like that so again, we'll chuck that in the sink. We could realistically still use that. Right, the next thing I want to do is take the top off. So while we've still got support on either side of this, we'll remove the top section of the stack. And it saves us putting pressure on one side or the other whilst we disassemble it. So just a couple of tri clamps and away comes the top. Again, nice and easy. Another section taken apart. We'll pull the gasket off back in the sink. Uh, I think there's still one up here. There we go. That one in as well. And then we just need to remove these two bolts. And there we have it. They're the components of the flue. Apart from the apart from the chimney up at the top, so I suppose you could call it four components, including the lid. This is what makes up our stack. Now I realise I got carried away and this comes apart really quickly once I get it going. So I've already taken apart the cruciform which sends the pipework up to the 
free surf port and uh, out to the uh, flexible hose, the fill hose. So we've got as far down as that section and now the whole thing really does start to come apart very quickly. So we've just got some fittings off the plate chiller. And then this is the takeoff arm above Whirlpool. Um, you know, after the Whirlpool, this is the high takeoff, so you don't pull in your hops during the research. Then that's moving over to this side. We've got the um, plate chiller inlet. So this basically pushes beer into the plate chiller. Also used for reverse flow during cleaning, so we can send beer into the, pump, uh, the plate chiller in the wrong direction, which is always convenient to dislodge. We never get anything in there anyway, but you know what I mean. And then this fitting here is like a fork in the road, if you like. So the pump comes out. The pipe work comes out of the pump, and then it can go one of two ways. We can either bypass the plate chiller completely, or go directly into it. So we have one and a half inch RJTs coming out of the pump into, or should I say, coming out of the filter, which is what this is, into the pump. So for any of you that aren't familiar, this is a wedge wire filter which protects the inlet of the pump and prevents any kind of uh, bits of hot debris and whatever else making it into the pump mechanism. This two inch RJT fitting down here onto a concentric conical reducer. So this is our above whirlpool takeoff feed and this is our below whirlpool takeoff feed. So this is basically, this goes into the cone on the bottom of the boil kettle and then this into the pump. And this is the uh, the waste pipe. We didn't have to make it this big, but it conveniently reaches into our soak away for the building, so we never get any waste on the floor. It just goes straight down the down the drain. And then we've got the twin valve uh, manifold out the bottom of the tank. So this is where the liquid comes out of the tank and we can block off one valve we can block off one valve so we're able to take off through the above whirlpool takeoff port and leave everything in the cone alone or we open both of these valves and we drain the tank into waste this is the main cone isolator valve So this is the last port of call before we empty the tank. Moving on to the front, oh it's tight. This is the hot filter. So this is the main hot filter for the tank. This catches the majority or prevents the majority of the debris making its way down towards the pump and then the pump has a 750 micron filter of wedge wire in it to prevent it getting into the pump housing. But during CIP, we pretty much get most of this clean, but there are little spots that the uh, caustic doesn't get to, which is why it's important to do a full breakdown. And then you get little areas such as around the thread, which is actually housed inside another pipe, so you can't see that. You have to take it apart to get to them. So. This is why we do these full disassemblies. And then I just need to isolate the water to the plate chiller. 
which is that one, and we'll open it up, and I can just, I'm hoping that that's isolated, make sure I've got the right one, yeah, and then we can simply just remove the supply hose for the plate chiller assembly, and that's almost it, just a couple of connectors to come off, and then we'll move around the side and we'll start to extract the heating elements. There's also one more pipe at the bottom, but I'll get on my hands and knees and do that. You might see builders crack otherwise, so I'll do it off camera. So I've unplugged most of the connectors and indeed also the elements. And we're just about to slide out the two heating elements for the boil kettle. So we've got a tripod to fit in on them both. We'll remove these. It's staying where it is at the moment, but it will drop off in a second. Yep. So these look, yeah, a little bit slimy. So we've still got a little bit, a little bit of caustic on there, and there's still a little bit of uh, beer. But if you look at that, there's no burnt uh, or scorch marks on the element, so we'll give them a good clean in the sink. Same with this one. Yeah, very nice. As simple as that. And then just because we can, we'll take out the temperature probe and also the float level indicator. So there's the temp probe. And there's the Dugville float level indicator. All want a good scrub. So the plan is to to store the boil kettle under the little under the office basically. So we're just getting picked up. We're on a bit of a slope here as well, so it doesn't help initially getting it going. Let's remove these. The back legs are a lot higher off the ground than the front at the moment. But once we come around, grab all the something solid there. Once we come around, there we go. Well, it's not going to fall backwards, feeling where the weight distribution is on that. It's going to fall towards me, which ain't a bad thing really. It only weighs a couple of, maybe 100, 200 kilos, so if I needed to catch it, they don't do that very easily. Oh, beautiful. We'll just set it down there. For the time being, we'll pick up this little bit of steel that I've used as a spacer. I'm probably going to do the same thing with the HLT, take the pipe work off, pull it out. Can you see me? I apologise. I'll probably do the same thing with the HLT, take the pipe work off, pull it out from the wall, and uh, when I give it all a good clean, probably paint the wall while I've got that out. And you know what? I could even put our final layer of paint down, final layer of paint down on the floor, and that will then be the brewery finished for the year. I don't want that two part epoxy paint to go off, you see I've got it stored up on the mezzanine. It does have a finite shelf life so I'd rather just put it on the floor whether I need to or not and see it set in its containers. It's quite a different scene isn't it? It even sounds different in here, which it would. There's less obstacles to stop the sound from bouncing. So. I managed to get it all down there in the bottom 
and the workshop is full and cluttered now but it's a lovely warm day today it's actually 21 degrees in here so I'm gonna go home I'm gonna let the rest of the day dry out this floor I'll probably just push them up around in a couple of the dirty places such as underneath where I've taken the steps up hopefully we'll come in tomorrow morning and it will be nice and dry and then what we'll do is look at getting a coat of paint down tomorrow and fingers crossed that'll be dry enough on Tuesday for us to walk on and then Wednesday put the kit back that's the plan anyway uh, but there we go I'm gonna wrap it up boys and girls so thanks very much for joining me on this little vlog I hope you enjoyed watching me take the bull kettle apart and do me the obligatories please and go down into the bottom comment section uh, or description and please click on that link for the North Knots Business Awards and give us a vote if you haven't done already I'm gonna keep pestering you until you do it and while you're there you could of course nip across to the shop pick up some of our fantastic beers or even I don't know subscribe or follow me on all of the other usual social uh, socials, socials I was gonna say social medias and I said so socials anyway that's enough from me and I'll see you on the next vlog I oh, thank you